Hi everybody, welcome to our next lecture on the idea of forces, and today I just want to talk about some very specific forces that we will encounter throughout the year, and um, something called a free body diagram, something that will help us really understand what's going on when there are a lot of forces involved. Now one of the forces we already mentioned is the idea of weight. The symbol for weight is often a capital W, and weight represents the force of gravity that acts on an object's mass. Now we've already learned, of course, that weight is equal to mass times gravity. That's that F equals ma. I often don't like to use W um, because we see the letter W pop up a lot. It'll be for work. It'll be the unit watt. Um, so a lot of times when you see me write weight, instead of writing W, I'm going to write mg. We'll see that as we go. Another common force used in physics is called the tension force, given by the symbol capital T. Tension forces occur on ropes and strings and things like that. And tension is only a pulling force. Okay? It's only a pulling force because if you try to push on a rope or a string, it collapses. There's really no force. So whenever you have a string, we indicate that force is a tension force and it always pulls from where it's connected. The third one I'm going to mention here is called the normal force. Now, it's not called the normal force because all the other ones are weird and this one's normal. Um, it is a very, very specific force. When one object comes in contact with the other, there must be a force due to that contact. And that normal force is a force that acts perpendicular to the point where these two surfaces make contact. Now, we'll see this a little more when we talk about free body diagrams. Um, also, when it comes to the idea of the symbol of the normal force, there are many physics teachers who use a capital N to represent normal force. I don't like to do that because all forces are measured in the unit capital N Newtons, and sometimes it gets confusing. So I'm going to use Fn for normal force when we do this. So where will all these come into play? Well, one of the biggest things that helps us understanding the idea of when multiple forces are acting on an object is something called a free body diagram. It's a picture version of forces to help us understand which way forces are acting, how big they are, things like that. So first of all, when we're drawing a free body diagram, it's a sketch of all forces acting on the object. Okay? It is not forces created by the object, only ones that are acting directly on the object itself. So first thing we need to do is to draw the object in free space. In other words, we're sort of going to just pull it out of whatever situation it's in and draw it as if nothing is touching it. Then we'll draw arrows to show the directions at which the forces act. And many times some teachers prefer that you draw longer arrows to indicate larger forces. Um, I'm not always so good at that, but sometimes maybe your teacher will ask you to do that. And then we're going to label the forces with whatever type of force they are, whether it's tension, normal, weight, pushing force, things like that. We don't want to put numbers there. We just want to put what types of forces they are. So let's look at a couple of examples. My first example is imagine something that is in simple free fall. In other words, just falling through the air. Um, and let's just say that there is no air resistance, anything like that involved. So the free body diagram of this object as it falls. Well, first of all, we draw the object in free space. Okay. Now, I know it's kind of already free itself, but we're just going to do it that way. Now, we have to think about what forces would act on this. Well, if it's in free fall, we know that one force that definitely acts on it is the force of gravity. In other words, the object's weight. In fact, that's always going to be true, unless we're in a completely weightless environment. So the first force I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arrow straight down and I'm going to label it weight, or as I said, I like to write mg. Now, there's no one else touching it, there's no air resistance, there's no friction, there's nothing else. And so that's it. That's the whole free body diagram. Pretty simple, right? But it also kind of gives us an idea of why this object is moving downward. If there's only one force on it and it acts downward, it makes sense that the object would act straight down. Second one. Say we've got someone who is pushing this crate here to the right. Okay? 
And again, we'll ignore things like friction, air resistance, things like that. And I want to look at the free body diagram of this. Well, first, I draw the object in free space. In other words, I just draw the object. I don't care about the person, anything else, just the object itself. Now, first force is always good to start with. Wait, because it always exists, and it only ever acts one direction, straight down. So I'll draw an arrow straight down, labeling it mg. And again, gravity can only ever act straight down, so it's always the simplest one to draw. Next, clearly we have someone pushing it to the right. Now, so I can draw my arrow there, but it would be the same thing as if I drew my arrow here. Either thing is acceptable. As long as the arrow points in the right direction, it actually doesn't matter which side you draw it on. Now for me, I, since he's making the contact here, I kind of like to put it there. So what do we label this force? Well, there's no rope, it's not tension, it's clearly not weight. Um, so why don't I just call it force sub P for pushing force, simple enough. There's another force here might not be so obvious. Now, notice that there's that downward force of weight, but the crate is not able to move downward. Now, in order to not move downward, that must mean there needs to be an upward force that prevents it moving down. Well, that's clearly coming from the ground. That is called the normal force. Because the crate and the surface make contact here at the ground, the normal force is perpendicular, 90 degrees, due to that contact. Okay, So that's what's called the normal force there. Ignoring friction, anything else, there are no other forces here. And it also kind of fits the picture. You see, the crate is not moving up or down. And that makes sense because there are two forces acting opposite each other. And it turns out they also have to be equal to each other. That prevents any up and down motion. But the pushing force doesn't have anything acting against it. So it should mean that this crate will move very easily to the right. Third example. Now tied my crate to a rope and attached it to the ceiling. So, the free body diagram. Well, first of all, we draw it in free space. Of course, our first force we always want to go with, we want to go with the weight, force of gravity. Only acts one way, straight down. Label it mg for the weight. Now, here I have a rope attached to the top of the box. Ropes are only allowed to pull. So there's a force pulling upward from the box. And I'll label it T for a tension force due to the tension of the rope. There is no normal force here. There, the rope is already taken care of, and the crate is not in contact with any other surface. So that's it. Now notice, the crate is hanging there without motion, so that must mean that this tension and this weight force are probably equal to each other. And that would make sense, because if the tension was greater than the weight, you would go up with a greater force. If the weight was greater than the tension, it should go down if it was a greater force. Now this last one's kind of interesting. This is someone who is pressing something and holding it against the wall where it's not moving. Let's look at this free body diagram. A little trickier one. Now to begin with, of course, we've got weight. Pretty simple, right? Clearly, there is someone pushing on this thing to the left. So we have that pushing force. Now, this thing is clearly not moving left, so that must mean there is a force to the right. Well, what could that force be? Well, over here we've got contact and the wall must be acting at that contact. Notice, 90 degrees, right? Guess what? That's a normal force there. Okay? Because there is contact there, two surfaces in contact, there must be a normal force. But the object that is being held against the wall is not moving downward. Now notice, we have that downward weight. Now that means there must be some sort of upward force acting on this. So what could that force be? Well, we're going to talk about this force a lot later on, but it's going to be a very special force called friction. And I'm going to lower, we're going to symbolize friction with a lowercase f. 
and in particular something we'll later on called static friction. We'll talk all about what that means later on. Right. And so basically that's how you can draw a free body diagram. So given any situation, you should be able to draw these particular pictures. So let's look at a couple of other examples. In this example, we have two crates that we want to move. So we're going to be clever. First of all, we're going to tie them together with a rope. And then we'll be able to sort of grab a hold of that first one and start dragging it to the right. Now, we want to look at the free body diagrams here. Well, there are two separate objects. And whenever there are two or more objects, each one gets its very own free body diagram. Again, for a moment, we ignore things like friction. If we look at the one on the left, well, of course, it has weight, as all things do, mg or m1g, because they are different objects. I probably want to label them that way. It's sitting on a surface, so that must mean there is a normal force acting upward on it. And there's a rope tied to it on the right-hand side. And ropes can only pull, so there must be a tension force that way. Now notice, I don't have a force of this person pulling on crate M1. And the reason why is because that person is not in contact with it. Crate M1 has no idea that person even exists. All it knows is there's a force applied to it. And again, it would make sense that crate M1 is going to move to the right because it has an unbalanced tension force. Okay, there's no force acting to the left on it. Now, let's look at the second one. Well, again, let's start off with the fact that it also has weight. It's sitting on the ground, so it must have a normal force. The person is pulling it to the right. But then there's also a rope here on its left-hand side. And again, ropes can only pull. So there's a tension force there. Now, a couple things to note. First of all, in order for crate M2 to move to the right, that means this pushing force must be greater than that tension force. Okay. So now we get an understanding of how forces interact with each other. But secondly, you'll notice that I didn't label the tensions as a 1 and a 2. Well, notice that one of the tension pulls to the right and the other pulls to the left. Guess what this means? Newton's third law is at play. Action, reaction. You see, these tensions are equal and opposite because they act on the same rope. And that's how action, reaction can come into play. And so the whole system moves because, in a way, those tensions almost sort of cancel each other out. Um, and really what you have is the first person pulling with really nothing resisting in the end. So that's one example. Let's look at a second one. Here, I've got a pulley. And I've attached these two objects with a rope over the pulley. So one is hanging down and one is able to slide on the table. And I'm going to let them go. And when I let them go, this one's going to fall, and this one is going to move to the right. Two objects, two free body diagrams. Let's look. First of all, the one up on the table. Well, it has its weight. It's sitting on a surface. So that must mean there's a normal force acting on it. There's a rope attached to it on the right-hand side. And so that means there's a tension there. And that's it. The second one, well, I always want to start with that weight. It has a rope attached to the top of it, so there must be a tension pulling up. Now, there's no normal force. It's not in contact with any surfaces. Now, you'll notice that I didn't, again, label those tension forces different. You might say, well, they're acting in two different directions, and in a way, you're right. But they are acting on the same rope, so action-reaction is still at play. On a rope, those tension forces are always equal and really acting opposite. So in a way, those tensions sort of go cancel out. So notice that the weight of M2, that's really what's dragging the entire system, making everything move. So again, you get an understanding of how things move in turn, by looking at the forces. One other neat example, ramps. The idea of a ramp is to sort of make things easier. 
um, in order to move something either up or down. Um, ramps are often employed to make it an easier process. And to sort of look at why. And in this case, we're letting something sort of just slide down a ramp. Now, when you draw a free body diagram, you have to draw the object exactly as it looks. So since the object is tilted because it's sitting on the ramp, we're going to draw it tilted. Now, the forces. Well, weight. Weight only acts one direction, straight down. Okay. Now, it's sitting on the ramp on a surface, so the force has to be pushing 90 degrees perpendicular to that surface. So that normal force actually points like this. Okay. Now, if you look at that, the normal force, you know, the sort of lifting force, you want to almost look at it that way, is not entirely equal to the weight. It's actually just equal to part of the weight. And that's where, why ramps actually help out. Uh, by using a ramp, you don't have to lift the whole weight of something. Um, you know, if you don't have a ramp, you have to lift up the whole great box to wherever it is you want to go. But by using a ramp, the normal force sort of takes on some of that weight and makes it easier for you to move up a ramp. So one of the reasons this is able to slide down the ramp, slide down here, is that the normal force and the weight aren't completely equal to each other. They're slightly off balance. And off balance enough that some of the weight allows it to fall, but it doesn't free fall. So that's basically the idea of some different types of forces we'll see and how to draw a free body diagram. See you next time.